Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. I have a repeat guest and a very special guest. He is Mr. Frank Holmes. He is the chairman of Hive Blockchain Technologies, which on the TSX is the ticker symbol is Hive, H-I-V-E, easy to remember. And on the United States OTC markets, it is H-V-B-T-F. I recommend people visit HiveBlockchain.com. Mr. Holmes is also the author at Frank Talk. CEO blog, and I'll put a link to that as well. Mr. Holmes, welcome back to Looking at the Markets, sir. It's great to be with you. Yeah, it's always great to have you. I learned so much about blockchain technology and the markets in general. And before we start, I recommend people also go to this link below the video. It is PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash forward slash must, M-U-S-T, forward slash must. This is a report on the must own blockchain technology stock that you need to get right now this one's going to be a huge winner all right mr holmes i want to start with a broad overview of the blockchain sector Uh, i hear that the daily trading volume of bitcoin btc is over four billion dollars that's incredible so where is all of this bitcoin moving to and from if merchant acceptance of bitcoin is so marginal right now well, actually, the the acceptance is growing uh, for Bitcoin. We had a pushback, and I think you, when I travel around the world and listen to different uh, speakers and interview people myself, like you're doing with me, to try to gather information yeah. uh, and insight, is that there's suppression, and they say this with gold markets, that there's a suppression by the G20 uh, ministers of finance uh, because they continue to have this massive uh, debt rollover. Uh, and it's just unprecedented. Uh, the EU bought $1 trillion of non-performing loans, and why didn't the currency fall? Uh, and why didn't gold explode into it? And the same thing appears to be with Bitcoin, and the peak took place when it became on the CME, uh, that the, the ability to suppress the price, well, regulations are coming out. I, I think that that's, uh, you know, a... a a, a well-known st- story that's that's now are the facts there with the uh, bitcoin etc i can't really say that but i can say with gold it's come with lawsuits of showing spoofing of markets major bankers have been fined uh, massive fines uh for playing games in, in the gold pits especially on days when china's not a player so it could be a rollover of this is taking place in the crypto space how long this will last it's, it's judgment. I thought the worst would be over by July when the G20 was supposed to come up with their global uh, thoughts on regulations, and now it's been delayed till October. And I think once we get through that phase, then we'll see a surge in cryptocurrencies. Uh, it continues, blockchain continues to be significant, cryptocurrency continues to be significant. Uh, there are the uh, one of the Fed banks is now in, in St. Louis has created an index of uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, the CFA Society, uh, they are now p- part of their curriculum, uh, which for your listeners, you got to understand to become a CFA, it's a grueling six hour exam mm. uh, three times over three years. Uh, and part of that curriculum started this year is cryptocurrencies and blockchain. So it's not going away. It's just a, a very challenging bear market uh, until there's a finalization of regulations. Got it. Now, the mining cost, I want to talk about that. The mining cost of Bitcoin has gone up dramatically. And Canada has been crowned in some publications as the best jurisdiction. Uh, What can you tell us about the mining costs and advancements in mining technology and the business of mining in general? Well, there's no doubt that what they call the hash rate has exploded. And a lot of it has to do with China. So the fact that China stopped mining, etc., is just a fallacy. Uh, there's there's allegedly you no know, collusion with the government uh, stopping one, and, but on the other hand, allowing all this mining taking place. So you have only a limited number of supply of coins to validate each day. And if you have more miners coming in, it becomes more difficult and competitive. So therefore, your hash rates rise and you get less crumbs or less bitcoins for that mining. And I think that that's been a, a big impact. Now, Canada 
No, I think you have to be very selective in Canada. Quebec came out as being a great place, and all of a sudden they moved the goalposts. Uh, you're seeing that other places like Manitoba seem to be uh, much more receptive to mining. And, and I think in the U.S., it's basically stranded electricity. And there's lots of pockets in Eastern Europe, as much as there is in the U.S., where dams were built and uh, uh, old steel mills shut down or old uh, lumber mills shut down, and you have this stranded electricity. Uh, and that's where the, the, the miners are going, and they're going where you have to get electricity under five cents. If it's not under five cents a kilowatt hour, it makes it much more difficult to be competitive globally. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Uh, now, when I look at a website like Coin Market Cap, uh, for example, I see that there are over 1,900 cryptocurrencies listed right now. And so obviously, it's not that difficult to create a coin. Uh, the value is not in creating the token, it's in the utility. Uh, should investors look at crypto projects in the same light as they would, let's say, a startup company? Well, there's no doubt a lot of speculative money went into this crypto space that used to go into junior mining and exploration and actually really uh, risky uh, technology projects. Uh, it all rolled into this cryptocurrency world last year, in particular the new startups who predominantly used Ethereum. Uh, as the protocol, uh, and I think it was estimated between five and seven billion dollars that normally would have gone into junior uh, uh, companies went into uh, these cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. And the big reason for that is that Ethereum created 10,000 millennial millionaires. So there's all this energy enthusiasm of continuously speculating. Uh, now, what, what I think is going to happen is investors have to really look at the ability for that token to have value such as a, a New York stock, a New York uh, uh, subway. That token has value only for New York, but it has a lot of, and same thing in Toronto, a subway token has a value and it has utility. A lot of these things are just ways of raising money. They really are not going to have a coin that has a, a huge utility to it. So that's where the regulators have come down, that they're just another form of selling securities. They really don't have a utility. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Now, uh, Frank Holmes, again, I'm speaking with Mr. Holmes, who is the chair of Hive Blockchain Technologies, uh, a dominant uh, ETH miner and soon BTC, Bitcoin miner. Uh, now, at the interim, during the interim, you're also the executive chairman, which gives you more responsibilities. Uh, the company recently published financial results for the first quarter, net revenue about $6.5 million, annualized to $27 million, that's U.S. dollars. Your market cap is just above $200 million. Uh, would it be fair to say uh, that had this company been bought by a private investor for, let's say, $200 million today, he would be banking pre-tax, this is pre-tax, $27 million a year, or around 13 to 14 percent ROI uh, or is it more complex than that so can you take time to give us a, an analysis of the numbers an investor would be looking at right now well it is more complex than that and uh, if you take a look at the, what, how the impact when Bitcoin was 19,000 Ethereum was over $1,300 uh, our run rate by the end of September would have been 300 million in revenue mm. uh, the the fall in the currencies is saying now we're gonna have 45 million in revenue, but we're going to have very high profit margins. Uh, and that's what's really exciting about it, that we do have these high gross margins, uh, and that gives us the ability to continue to grow and expand our operations. Uh, out of all, you know, we were the first to go public. Uh, we became the sort of poster child for this space, uh, we have the most trading volume, and uh, we've been able to demonstrate uh, you know, uh, this this huge returns on invested capital. Now that's going to decline because we've been showing in the last couple of quarters that our profit margins have been modestly shrinking, but they are, and that's what happens when these hash rates we talked about earlier have exploded on the upside. Historically, that means uh, that uh, miners end up leaving, a lot of the marginal miners, and then the hash rates come down and the currency starts to go through a, a raise again, a rise again. So I think we're in that lull period between now and, and the end of October uh, when we get a re-rating. Yeah, uh, you know, I've been watching Hive very carefully. I've seen the growth. It's been fantastic. Uh, what 
competitive advantage or moat, as uh, Warren Buffett likes to call it, does Hive blockchain technology have in the field of ETH and BTC? What is that internal proprietary process that others don't have? Well, we started off with uh, partners with Genesis Mining, who owns 25% of the company, who are the biggest cloud uh, provider for independent people that want to mine their own coins. They have 2 million people prepaying them uh, two years. So they're our strategic partner. Uh, and I think that that is uh, their ability uh, with they, how they service uh, the, our, our business model, the service master service agreement. And I think that that's what uh, is, was the beginning of this whole exercise was our moat. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell people more about Genesis Mining? Because I know that's an integral part of the success of Hive. Well, Genesis Mining is uh, two uh, today, two young entrepreneurial uh, Germans. Uh, one is Mark, uh, then actually both names are Marco. Uh, one is 29 and the other one is going to be 42. One is a PhD in, in math and in theoretical physics and the other one finished university math, uh, Marco Strang. And you can see his uh, TED Talk and TEDx, uh, type in Strang, S-T-R-E-N-G. Uh, and you can watch it. It's just a great uh, video to watch to learn about what he's done. But it's remarkable that they have 2 million people in 200 countries using their cloud services for, to mine uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin and these other coins they want to focus on. Yeah. No, that, it's fantastic what Genesis Mining is due. The hash rate is so, so powerful. Uh, wanted to talk just a general question totally changing gears for a moment um, because uh, Frank Holmes, for those who don't know, is is a renowned market expert, uh, not just in the blockchain. Wanted to talk about the USD, the dollar. Uh, has had a pretty good year actually so far, a surprise to many people, uh, along with stocks. Uh, gold, uh, silver, not so much. Uh, a <laughs> bit of a bear market. Uh, do you see any reason uh, for reversal or change in the trends? Well, the big reason I'm surprised that gold is uh, you know not lower relative to the U.S. dollar yield. So when the the magic factor is the two-year real interest rates. What what will the U.S. government pay you minus the CPI number, and is it positive or negative? And whenever the two-year, five-year, and ten-year are all positive rates of return, gold gets suppressed, and unless the other countries' currencies and it becomes competitive with the global scene. But what blows me away is that the EU and German bonds and French bonds, they all have negative real interest rates. So one would think that the euro should be much lower. Uh, in Japan, 10 years is 10 basis points, 10 basis points. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm amazed that uh, the dollar is not stronger, uh, substantially stronger on that relative basis. But I think on one hand, they're raising rates, and Trump is being t attacking everyone in the world. Uh, I mean, you just go every weekend. It's just uh, who's who, he, he looks like he's at duck season looking for to shoot ducks. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So just wanted to get a feel for the future as we wrap things up. Again, I'm speaking with Mr. Frank Holmes, chairman of Hive Blockchain Technologies. On the TSX exchange in Canada, it is HIVE. In the United States, OTC markets, it is HVB. TF. Uh, what's in the future for Hive? I know you've got some amazing developments coming, so uh, what can we look forward to Dave, as an investor? You know, David, you know, I, I, um, one of the things about our GPU cards, they have greater value besides just mining Ethereum. Uh, what we've discovered is, is the power of rendering and the, the, the massive growth in artificial intelligence uh, and uh, computer mobile games, mobile games, I mean, just unbelievable machine zone. Uh, and uh, I wrote a piece on meeting Gabe uh, Layden, who started that company, uh, and they process 500 million trends, events a second, 500 million. Mm. And in our Icelandic operation, GPU could process 100 million. Mm. Uh, so who's going to need that? Movies, animation movies, artificial intelligence, smart cities, what they call smart cities like Auckland, New Zealand, uh, that has uh, everything on an app. 
Uh, and so I think that our GPUs and our data centers are going to have a very longer, lo longer life shelf life, and therefore we can reap higher returns on the capital. Uh, usually, you write these GPU cards off over three years and ASICs over two years. So I, I remain very bullish of opportunities are coming to us in that space. Uh, we're looking at other places, uh, other coins to mine. Uh, we look at the where the the uh, hash rates are lower and there's a greater profit margin such as Dash or Bitcoin. Uh, we'll be looking at Bitcoin Cash. And uh, so we'll be able to be uh, more when we get our Bitcoin operation going, uh, which starts at the end of September, uh, which I'm very excited about because that will almost double our revenue. That's fantastic. Fantastic for the company. Fantastic for the blockchain community and ecosystem and for investors. And I do want people to go to PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash must, M-U-S-T. Uh, that's our report, exclusive report on the must own blockchain technology stock. It, it's a great way to play the blockchain. I'm bullish on it. I know that Tom Beck, the chief researcher from Portfolio Wealth Global, Dot com is bullish on blockchain and and of course frank holmes has been our guest fantastic uh, is there anything else you wanted to mention anything i missed yeah you got to buy these things in the in the lull periods and what everyone should know that the daily volatility of the stock market is one percent 70 percent of the time it's a non-event for the stock market to go up or down one percent and that's exactly the same data point for bullion gold stocks are greater they're more like three percent and Ethereum and Bitcoin are 6 and 7%. So anyone looking at Hive or, or the cryptocurrencies, I've got to really appreciate, use the downdrafts to be a buyer. Uh, it just it's it, and the surges are phenomenal. So any any turn in the 50-day moving average rising above by Ethereum and Bitcoin, then you'll see Hive explode because a lot of the quant funds have been modeling and using a Hive as a proxy rather than going and trading over the counter Bitcoin or Ethereum. They've been using Hive as a proxy. So I think that this is where people investors have to look at. It's speculative because of the volatility, but we make money. Oh, no doubt. The revenues are coming in. The numbers are strong. I'm huge on Hive. Whether, again, you like you mentioned, it can be used as a proxy for a cryptocurrency bet. But personally, I use Hive as a bet in favor of blockchain technology because it is about the blockchain. Regardless of where cryptocurrencies go, blockchain is here to stay and Hive is a great way to play it. Uh, I've been speaking with Mr. Frank Holmes, chairman of Hive Blockchain. I recommend people visit HiveBlockchain.com for more information, as well as the Frank Talk CEO blog. Uh, that's over at usfunds.com. I'll put that link in the description below the video. I see Mr. Holmes on Twitter all the time, and I'm always liking and retweeting those. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mr. Frank Holmes. You're welcome back anytime on Looking at the Market, sir. Cheers. Thank you.